Welcome to the Disciple Smiths Podcast. We're going through the entire Bible in one year. This is part eight in our series. We are going to be in chapters 23 through 26 of Genesis. Welcome to the Disciple Smiths Podcast. Welcome back to the podcast. We're in part eight of our series going through the entire Bible in one year. Uh, We're going to be going through Genesis 23 through 26 today. Some of the things that we've seen already is the creation of the world, uh, the table of nations where uh, they all form together and form one language and God scatters them. We've seen the flood. We've seen Abraham being called. Uh, We see a lot of um, stuff that has been going on with circumcision where God is identifying his covenant people. Uh, He makes a promise to Abraham that his offspring will multiply and bless the entire earth. And now we're beginning to see Uh, this actually take place and this come into fruition. And so we're getting to the end of Abraham and Sarah's lives here, and we get to see the next chapter starting here with Isaac and the rest of the family coming down the line. So we're just going to get right into it. If you're following along with me in your Bibles, I am reading the Holman Christian Standard Version. It's just easier for me to read. And so let's get to it. Chapter 23, it says, Now Sarah lived 127 years. These were all the years of her life. Sarah died in Kiriath Abar, that is Hebron, in the land of Canaan, and Abraham went to mourn for Sarah and to weep for her. Then Abraham got up from beside his dead wife and spoke to the Hittites. I am a foreign resident among you. Give me a burial site among you so that I can bury my dead. The Hittites replied to Abraham, Listen to us, Lord. You are God's chosen one one among us. Bear your dead in our finest burial place. None of us will withhold from you his burial place for burying your dead. Then Abraham rose and bowed down to the Hittites, the people of the land. He said to them, If you are willing for me to bury my dead, listen to me and ask Ephron, son of Zohar, on on my behalf to give me the cave of Machpelah that belongs to him. It is at the end of his field. Let him give it to me in your presence for the full price as a burial place. Ephron was sitting among among the Hittites. So in the presence of all the Hittites who came to the gate of his city, Ephron the Hittite answered Abraham, No, my lord, listen to me. I give you the field, and I give you the cave that is in it. I give you it in the presence of all my people. Bury your dead. Abraham bowed down to the people of the land and said to Ephron in the presence of the people of the land, Please listen to me. Let me pay the price for, of the field, accept it from me, and let me bury my dead there. Ephron answered Abraham and said to him, My lord, listen to me. Land worth, 400 shek- land worth 400 shekels of silver. What is that between you and me? Bury your dead. Abraham agreed with Ephron, and Abraham weighed out to Ephron the silver that he had agreed to in the presence of the Hittites, 400 shekels of silver at the current commercial rate. So Ephron's field at Machpelah near Mamre, the field with its cave and all the trees uh, anywhere within the boundaries of the field, became Abraham's possession in the presence of all the Hittites who came to the gate of his city. After this, Abraham buried his wife Sarah in the cave of the field at Machpelah near Mamre, that is Hebron, in the land of Canaan. The field with its cave passed from the Hittites to Abraham as a burial place. Chapter 24. Abraham was now old, getting on in years, and the Lord had blessed him in everything. Abraham said to his servant, the elder of his household who managed all he owned, Place your hand under my thigh, and I will have you swear by the Lord, God of heaven and earth, that you will not take a wife for my son from the daughters of the Canaanites among whom I live, but will go to my land and my family to take a wife for my son Isaac. The servant said to him, Suppose the woman is unwilling to follow me to this land. Should I have your son go back to the land you came from? Abraham answered him, Make sure that you don't take my son back there. The Lord, the God of heaven, who took me from my father's house and from my native land, who spoke to me and swore to me, I will give this land to your offspring. He will send his angel before you, and you can take a wife for my son from there. If the woman is unwilling to follow you, then you are free from this oath to me. But don't let my son go back there. So the servant placed his hand under his master Abraham's thigh and swore an oath to him concerning this matter. 
The servant took ten of his master's camels and departed with all kinds of his master's goods in hand. Then he set out for Nahor's town, Aram Naharam. Uh, he made the camels kneel beside the well of water outside the town at evening. This was the time when the woman went out to draw water. Lord, God of my master Abraham, he prayed, give me success today and show kindness to my master Abraham. I am standing here at the spring where the daughters of men of the town are coming out to draw water. Let the girl to whom I say, please lower your water jug so that I may drink, and who responds, drink and I will water your camels also. Let her be the one you have appointed to your servant Isaac. By this I will know that you have shown kindness to my master. Before he had finished speaking, there was Rebekah, daughter of Bethuel, son of Milcah, the wife of Abraham's brother Nahor, coming with a jug on her shoulder. Now the girl was very beautiful, a young woman who had not known a man intimately. She went down to the spring, filled her jug, and came up. Then the servant ran to meet her and said, Please let me have a little water from your jug. She replied, Drink, my lord. She quickly lowered her jug to her hand and gave him a drink. And when she had finished giving him a drink, she said, I'll also draw water for your camels and they have had, until they have had enough to drink. She quickly emptied her jug into the trough and hurried to the well again to draw water. She drew water for all his camels. While the man silently, silently watched her to see whether or not the Lord had made his journey a success. After the camels had finished drinking, the man took a gold ring weighing half a shekel, and for her wrist two bracelets weighing ten shekels of gold. Whose daughter are you? he asked. Please tell me, is there room in your father's house for us to spend the night? She answered him, I am the daughter of Bethuel, son of Milcah, whom she bore to Nahor. She also said to him, We have plenty of straw and feed and a place to spend the night. Then the man bowed down, worshipped the Lord, and said, Praise the Lord, the God of my master Abraham, who has not withheld his kindness and faithfulness from my master. As for me, the Lord has led me on the journey to the house of my master's relatives. The girl ran and told her mother's household about these things. Now Rebekah had a brother named Laban, and Laban ran out to the man at the spring. As soon as he had seen the ring and bracelets on his sister's wrists, and when he heard his sister Rebekah's words, the man said this, the man said this to me, he went to the man. He was standing there by the camels at the spring. Laban said, Come, you who are blessed by the Lord, why are you standing out here? I have prepared the house and a place for the camels. So the man came to the house, and the camels were unloaded. Straw and feed were given to the camels, and water was brought to wash his feet and the feet of the men with him. A meal was set before him, but he said, I will not eat until I have said what I have to say. So Laban said, Please speak. I am Abraham's servant, he said. The Lord has greatly blessed my master, and he has become rich. He has given him sheep and cattle, silver and gold, male and female slaves, and camels and donkeys. Sarah, my master's wife, bore a son to my master in her old age, and he has given him everything he owns. My master put me under this oath. You will not take a wife for my son from the daughters of the Canaanites in whom, whose land I live, but will go to my father's household and to take my family to take a wife for my son. But I said to my master, Suppose the woman will not come back with me. He said, The Lord before whom I have walked will send his angel with you and make your journey a success. And you will take a wife for my son from my family and from my father's household. Then you will be free from my oath if you go to my family and they do not give her to you. You will be free from my oath. Today, when I came to the spring, I prayed, Lord, God of my master Abraham, if only you will make my journey successful. I am standing here at a spring. Let the virgin who comes out to draw water, and I say to her, Please let me drink a little water from your jug, and who responds to me, Drink, and I'll water your camels also. Uh, let her be the woman the Lord has appointed for my master's son. Before I had finished praying silently, there was Rebekah coming with her jug on her shoulder, and she went down to the spring and drew water. So I said to her, Please let me have a drink. She quickly lowered her jug from her shoulder and said, Drink, and I'll water your camels also. So I drank, and she watered the camels also. Then I asked her, Whose daughter are you? She responded, The daughter of Bethuel, son of Nahor, whom Milcah bore to him. So I put the ring on her nose and the bracelets on her wrist. Then I bowed down, worshipped the Lord, and praised the Lord, the God of my master Abraham, who guided me on the right way to take the granddaughter of my master's brother for his son. 
Now, if you're going to show kindness and faithfulness to my master, tell me. If not, tell me, and I will go elsewhere. Laban and Bethuel said, This is from the Lord. We have no choice in the matter. Rebekah is here in front of you. Take her and go, and let her be a wife for your master's son, just as the Lord has spoken. When Abraham's servant heard their words, he bowed to the ground before the Lord. Then he brought out objects of silver and gold and garments and gave them to Rebekah. He also gave precious gifts to her brother and her mother. Then he and the men with him ate and drank and spent the night. When they got up in the morning, he said, Send me to my master. But her brother and mother said, Let the girl stay with us for about ten days, then she can go. But he responded to them, Do not delay me, since the Lord has made my journey a success. Send me away so that I may go to my master. So they said, Let's call the girl and ask her opinion. They called Rebekah and said to her, Will you go with this man? She replied, I will go. So they went away. They sent away their sister Rebekah with the one who had nursed who had nursed and raised her, and Abraham's servant and his men. They blessed Rebekah, saying to her, Our sister, may you become thousands upon ten thousands. May your offspring possess the gates of their enemies. Then Rebekah and her female servants got up, mounted the camels, and followed the man. So the servant took Rebekah and left. Now Isaac was returning from Bear Lahay Leroy, for he was living in the Negev region. In the early evening, Isaac went out to walk in the field, and looking up, he saw camels coming. Rebekah looked up, and when she saw Isaac, she got down from her camel, and asked the servant, Who is that man in the field coming to meet us? The servant answered, It is my master. So she took her veil and covered herself. Then the servant told Isaac everything he had done. And Isaac brought her into the tent of his mother Sarah and took Rebekah to be his wife. Isaac loved her, and he was comforted after his mother's death. Chapter 25. Now Abraham was, had taken another wife whose name was Keturah, and she bore him Zimram, Jokshan, Medan, Median, Ishbak, and Shua. Jokshan fathered Sheba and Dedan. Dedan's sons were Ashurim, Latushim, and Lumim. And Midian's sons were Ephah, Epher, Hanak, Abadah, and Eldah. All these were the sons of Keturah. Abraham gave everything he owned to Isaac. And Abraham gave gifts to the sons of his concubines, but while he was still alive, he sent them eastward, away from his son Isaac, to the land of the east. This is the length of Abraham's life, 175 years. He took his last breath and died at a ripe old age, old and contented. And he was gathered to his people. His sons Isaac and Ishmael buried him in the cave of Machpelah near Mamre, in the field of Hephron, uh, in the field of Ephron, son of Zohar the Hittite. This was the field that Abraham bought from the Hittites. Abraham was buried there with his wife Sarah. After Abraham's death, God blessed his son Isaac, who lived near Bir Laha Roy. Ishmael's family records. These are the family records of Abraham's son Ishmael, whom Hagar the Egyptian, Sarah's slave, bore to Abraham. These are the names of Ishmael's sons. Their names, according to their family records, are, no, are Neboeth, Ishmael's firstborn, then Kedar, Abil, Mibsam, Mishma, Duma, Massa, Hadad, Tima, Jeter, Nefish, and uh, Kadima. These are Ishmael's sons, and these are their names by their villages and encampments, twelve leaders of their clans. This is the length of Ishmael's life, 137 years. He took his last breath and died and was gathered to his people. And they settled from Havilah to Shur, which is opposite Egypt as you go eastward to Asher. He lived in opposition to all of his brothers. These are the family records of Isaac, son of Abraham. Isaac fa Abraham fathered Isaac. Isaac was 40 years old when he took as his wife Rebekah, daughter of Bethuel, the Aramean, from Paddan, Aram, and the sister of Laban, the Aramean. Aramean. Isaac prayed to the Lord on behalf of his wife because she was childless. The Lord heard his prayer, and his wife Rebekah conceived. But the children inside her struggled with each other, and she said, Why is this happening, happening to me? So she went to inquire of the Lord, and the Lord said to her, Two nations are in your womb. Two people will come from you and be separated. One people will be stronger than the other, and the other will serve the older will serve the younger. 
When her time came to give birth, there were indeed twins in her womb. The first one came out red-looking, covered with hair like a fur coat, and they named him Esau. After this, his brother came out grasping Esau's heel with his hand. So he was named Jacob. Isaac was 60 years old when they were born. When the boys grew up, Esau became an expert hunter, an outdoorsman. But Jacob was a quiet man who stayed at home. Isaac loved Esau because he had a taste for wild game, but Rebekah loved Jacob. Once, when Jacob was cooking a stew, Esau came in from the field, exhausted. He said to Jacob, Let me eat some of that red stuff because I am exhausted. That is why he also is named Edom. Jacob replied, First sell me your birthright. Look, said Esau, I'm about to die, so what good is a birthright to me? Jacob said, Swear to me first. So he swore to Jacob and sold his birthright to him. Then Jacob gave bread and lentil stew so e to Esau. He ate, drank, got up, and went away. So Esau despised his birthright. One more chapter, chapter 26. There was another famine in the land in addition to the one that had occurred in Abraham's lifetime. And Isaac went to Abimelech, king of the Philistines, at Gerar. The Lord appeared to him and said, Do not go down to Egypt. Live in the land that I tell you about. Stay in this land as a foreigner, and I will be with you and bless you. For I will give all of these lands to you and your offspring, and I will confirm the oath that I swore to your father Abraham. I will make your offspring as numerous as the stars of the sky. I will give your offspring all these lands, and all the nations of the earth will be blessed by your offspring. Because Abraham listened to my voice and kept my mandate, my commands, my statutes, and my instructions. So Isaac settled in Gerar. When the men of the place asked about his wife, he said, She is my sister, for he was afraid to say my wife, thinking the men of the place will kill me on account of Rebekah, for she is a beautiful woman. When Isaac had been there for some time, Abimelech, king of the Philistines, looked down from the window and was surprised to see Isaac caressing his wife Rebekah. Abimelech sent for Isaac and said, So she is really your wife. How could you say she is my sister? Isaac answered him, Because I thought I might die on account of her. Then Abimelech said, What is this you've done to us? One of the people could easily have slept with your wife, and you would have brought guilt on us. So Abimelech warned all the people with these words, Whoever harms this man or his wife will certainly die. Isaac sowed seed in that land, and in that year he reaped a hundred times what was sown. The Lord blessed him, and the man became rich and kept getting richer until he was very wealthy. He had flocks of sheep, uh, herds of cattle, and many slaves, and the Philistines were envious of him. The Philistines stopped up all the wells that his father's slaves had dug in the days of his father Abraham, filling them with dirt. And Abimelech said to Isaac, Leave us, for you are much too powerful for us. So Isaac left there, camped in the valley of Gerar, and lived there. Isaac reopened the water wells that had been dug in the days of his father Abraham, and that the Philistines had stopped up after Abraham died. He gave them the same names his father had given them. Then Isaac's slaves dug in the valley and found a well of spring water there. But the herdsmen of Gerar quarreled with Isaac's herdsmen and said, The water is ours. So he named the well Quarrel, because they quarreled with them. Then they dug another well and quarreled over that one also, so he named it Hostility. He moved from there and dug another, and they did not quarrel over it. He named it Open Spaces and said, For now the Lord has made room for us, and we will be fruitful in the land. From there he went to Beersheba, and the Lord appeared to him that night and said, I am the God of your father Abraham. Do not be afraid, for I am with you. I will bless you and multiply your offspring because of my servant, servant Abraham. So he built an altar there, called on the name of Yahweh, and pitched his tent there. Isaac's slaves also dug a well there. Now Abimelech came to him from Gerar with Ahuzath, his advisor, and Philcal, the commander of his army. Isaac said to them, Why have you come to me? You hated me and sent me away from you. They replied, We have clearly seen how the Lord has been with you. We think there should be an oath between two parties, between us and you. Let us make a covenant with you. You will not harm us, just as we have not harmed you, but have only done what was good to you, sending you away in peace. You are now blessed by the Lord. So he prepared a banquet for them, and they ate and drank. They got up early in the morning and swore an oath to each other. 
Then Isaac sent them on their way, and they left him in peace. On that same day, Isaac's slaves came to him, came to tell him about the well they had dug, saying to him, We have found water. It is He called it Sheba. Therefore the name of the city is Beersheba to this day. When Esau was forty years old, he took as his wife Judith, daughter of Beeri the Hittite, and Basemath, daughter of Elon the Hittite. They made life bitter for Isaac and Rebekah. Lord, may you bless the reading of this word. May it shape and transform our minds to better be guided by your will. It's in the name of Jesus we pray. Amen. Wow, so that was a lot of scripture as well. So I'm just going to take about 37 seconds to review some of this. First of all, Abraham's wife, Sarah, dies. Uh, his son, Isaac, finds a wife named Rebekah after having his servant there and getting camels and drawing water. Uh, Rebekah is very beautiful, just like his uh, Abraham's wife, Sarah, was very beautiful. So they pull the same stunt. It seems like a father-son antic here where... Isaac lies about, well, I guess he doesn't necessarily lie. He does lie because it's not his sister. He lies to Abimelech, the same king apparently, about his wife being his sister. And then the king sees him caressing his wife. Uh, I don't know why he was like spying on Isaac and Rebekah, but he was. And so he sees this and uh, makes a deal with Isaac as well. Isaac uh, begins to grow uh, big time. He, he sows seed and it reaps a hundredfold. So they kick him out. And here we get back to where Esau is starving. Esau sells his entire birthright to Jacob for one meal. Crazy, right? And so we see that uh, this, is, this is just going to keep rotating. Uh, there's some wells that they are arguing over where they're sharing, trying to share land and there's just too much there. And then the Lord appears uh, to Isaac, affirming the covenant that he had made before. So like I said, uh, this is where I'm going to kind of end it. Uh, e the last thing I'll mention is Esau's wives. Esau, who should have been of the pure bloodline from Seth, takes on this corrupted Hittite wives. He actually takes two wives in, into, into his household, and they, they're at odds with Isaac and Rebekah. And so uh, thank you for tuning in. Uh, this is the Disciple Smiths podcast.